Did everybody enjoy that lunch? Yes. Did you have enough to eat? Yes. How many of you had more than one dessert? No comments. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go into a very, very important subject, which some of you have requested over a period of time. And I'm so very happy for the emails and letters and other means of communication, telephone, whatever, from a number of you who have been asking questions about this very subject. And because of the fact that we're living in days of tremendous change, there are good things happening and there are not so good things happening. Are you aware of that? Yes. And some of you have requested information on the powers that are in control of the atmosphere that we breathe. And that's why I'm going to give you this lesson, including my personal experience with demons. The direct origin and mission of demons to this planet. You may say, well, what's this got to do with the inner circle? This is what it has to do with it. The more you know, the more you're able and capable of protecting yourself from every manner of evil. The more you know, the, the smarter you become. And I am of the opinion that no evil force has the authority to give you trouble. No evil entities, no members of the dark forces, no fallen angels who are now called demons, no little graves that have reportedly done tremendous damage to the human race throughout the world that have a right to disturb you in any way, shape, manner, or form. Now, the best way, as we learned in criminology, the best way to understand your enemy is to be able to think as they do, to discern what things they do and why they do it. Believe you me, very few ministers of the gospel, so-called, even broach this subject because of its many ramifications. They're afraid to mention the word demons or devils. There are some phases of organized religion that say there is no such thing as a devil. It's a figment of the imagination of people. Well, we're going to explode that hypothesis today and I'm going to show you, I'm going to expose them. Is that all right with you? And in such manner, you'll be able to protect yourself and deal with the situation firsthand. All right, here we go. As you heard in the previous lesson today, one third of the heavenly host of angels lost their first estate of divine perfection. Stop there for a moment. In the beginning, as I said this morning, God created the heavens and the earth. He also created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were so perfect that they could fly. How many of you never heard that before? They could travel through the atmosphere from point one to point two and even beyond. They had tremendous capabilities like the angels. The angels of God are able to walk through a solid wall they're able to appear in the back seat of your car while you're driving, like Commander Thor did one year after he left the Pentagon. From the back seat of my car, I was driving to my lawyer's office in Beverly Hills, and I hear the voice in the back seat, Hello, Frank, how are you? I nearly ran a red light. And I said, why don't you, like a normal person, uh, just uh, at least appear in the front seat? He said, I'm not a normal person. <laughs> The commander, I believe, is a member of the angelic staff of Almighty God. He is able to appear and reappear by disassembling the atomic structure of his body and reconstruct that same body, including his clothing, including what he has in his pockets, from point one to point two. The commander and his people, including Vice Commander Teal, she can appear in your home 
And I believe the day is coming that because of some of you ladies having a deep infinity and love for this lady, that she may appear in the privacy of your own home and minister to you according to your individual needs. What do you think about that? All right. How many of you are ready for that? Wow. Your hands went up fast. These people who were angelic beings at the beginning of time lost their power and they lost their inheritance as well as their ability to travel through time and space. However, they have retained the ability to deceive many people on earth. And this they almost do to the point of perfection. One third, one time, these angels are called demons, now called demons and are still under 100% control of Lucifer. They still maintain their ability to change their shape, size, and color. They often disguise themselves as earth people in order to carry out their vicious schemes of deceit as dictated by Lucifer himself. They also have the ability of speaking every known language and dialect on this planet, just like our space people. In this way, they're able to attempt to deceive every human being living today. They are in no way possible permitted to leave this planet Earth. When anyone writes a book or appears on radio or television and tells you that there are evil entities on another planet, write them off because they're lying. Lucifer, when he was kicked out of the heavens with one-third of his angelic host, were confined to a narrow corridor between the earth and the heavenly realm. Lucifer goes back and forth through that corridor almost on a daily basis, accusing you and accusing me. And Almighty God says, look, take a long walk off of a short bridge, please, and get out of here. I'm tired of looking at you. Yeah, but you don't know what Tom Titus did. And God says, listen, <clears throat> Whatever Tom Titus did is covered by the power of my thought, the power of my blood, the power of my divine forgiveness. And Lucifer said, is that right? And God said, you're better right now. Get out of here. And he's got to leave his presence. They also assume the shapes and forms which strongly resemble the so-called graves. They have gained the ability to erect saucer-shaped ships as well as other shapes, including that of a beehive. The beehive-shaped ships are the most dangerous. If you ever encounter such a vehicle, immediately cover yourself with the protection of the ring of fire and distance yourself from them as quickly as possible. For your additional consideration, please be aware that these demons often are accompanied by an awful smell. In other words, like Vice Commander Teal said, they stink. And she's right. In brief, they stink like a garbage dump under a hot sun. Furthermore, they have the ability of appearing like an angel of light. Boy, that's horrible, isn't it? That's terrible. They clothe themselves in such a way that you may pass them on the street without taking a second look. Many of them live underground in various passageways which are found in many places throughout our planet. They have bases from which they dispatch their own flying saucers, which have also deceived many into believing that they come from another planet. They can speak your own language. Ha, ah, but they cannot read your mind. Neither can Lucifer for that matter. While I was acting as pastor of my first church in Spring Lake Park, Minnesota, many years ago I received a phone call late one wintry night, and brother, it can get cold in Minnesota. I'll tell you, is that right, Reverend Carl? Yes, sir. I was already in bed. A light snow had fallen, and the wind was blowing around the parsonage. The call came from one of my deacons. He frantically spoke on the phone and he said, 
I have a dear friend who's a local pastor and he's in trouble. And the local farmer didn't have a telephone, so we contacted the highway patrol and they found that his friend's wife, the one who was in trouble, was acting very strangely and in need of help, help in a hurry. He further stated that I need not take time to shovel the snow away from my car and that he would pick me up in his own car. Of course, I quickly dressed, got ready, prepared myself with my Bible and my healing and anointing oil. I thought she must be very sick to make a call in the middle of this cold night. Within a short time, I heard his car pull up in my driveway, quickly got into his car, and we were off into the night. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from this unusual request. However, I was a new pastor. This was my first pastorate, unaccustomed to this type of communication. Now I'm going to tell you about an experience that I shall never forget. Our car pulled up to the Brown farm. Mr. Brown Herring standing and holding a kerosene lamp because for some reason or other his farm lost power in the electrical storm. He was trembling all over. It began to rain as well as snow that night. We saw tears running down his face, and he motioned us into the kitchen of his home, and he stated that his wife had been transformed into an evil entity. She had thrown knives and other objects at him. He noticed that, we noticed that his face was bleeding from that experience. At this particular time, I still did not know what to make of this particular situation. Mr. Brown had motioned to me to come ahead through the door leading to their bedroom. Inside, his wife was lying in the corner of the bed. I had my Bible, I had my anointing oil in my hands as I approached the door. Mr. Brown blurted out, I don't think you're going to need your Bible. Leave it here, which I did. I then proceeded with my little vial of anointing oil and tried to minister healing to the woman. I proceeded to approach the bedroom door thinking my deacon would be directly behind me. Boy, was I wrong. He said quietly, Dr. Frank, I think I better wait for you here in the kitchen, but I'll be praying for you. To which I said, thanks a lot. I then proceeded into the bedroom. As I turned the doorknob, I never expected what greeted my eyes. In the dim light of the other lamp that was on the dresser, I saw Mrs. Brown crouched in the corner of her bed. I noticed that both the pillows, cases, along with the sheets and the blanket were ripped to shreds. Now this was a little lady, she was only about 97 pounds. And she looked at me, she stared at me, and she growled. She sounded like a wild animal. As I walked closer to her, I thought it'd be well if I anoint her on the forehead with my oil, and her eyes glowed like a wolf in the wilderness on a cold night in Minnesota. As I reached out to anoint her with oil, she shouted at me with using terrible profanity she called me every name in the book, and then some. And she even called my name, and we'd never met before. And the voice coming from her mouth said, Frank, I know all about you. I know why you are here. You have absolutely no right to disturb me or this woman. A deep, guttural, masculine voice. This amazed me because nothing like this ever happened to me before. And then she shouted, What do you expect to do with that stupid oil bottle, you bastard? Well, in Bible college, they never told you what to do in a case like this. And I had to learn the hard way. The deep masculine voice continued curse words and vile comments. 
obscenities. And I shouted back at the demon, and I said, In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your evil-smelling, foul-mouthed demon, I take full authority over you, and I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I command you, and I pointed my finger at her, I command you to loose this woman and depart from her now. I no sooner got those words out of my mouth and I felt the crack across my face with such violence that both the oil bottle and I went flying in different directions. My back hit the wall with great force and power and without warning, the lamp on the dresser went out when I hit the wall. There I was sitting on the floor in a bedroom doing battle with a demon-possessed woman in a pitch black room. I didn't have any instruction book to consult. Then I slowly regained my senses. I rose gingerly to my feet and I was actually attempting to find the door now and get myself out of that bedroom. Do you think I can find it? No. No, no way. No way. Then I walked across the room a second time, still trying to find the doorknob in the dense silence and darkness of that bedroom. Then I heard the most beautiful, wonderful, welcome, and encouraging words coming from her. Thank you, sweet Jesus. She repeated it over and over. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Then the bedroom door slowly opened and both Mr. Brown and my deacon came in slowly. And Mr. Brown addressed his wife saying, Are you all right, honey? And he still stood there trembling. He was carrying another lighted oil lamp, which he carefully sat down on the dresser next to the one that blew out. And she said to him, yes, my darling, I'm feeling much better now. You better put on the coffee pot because it looks like this preacher needs a cup. I looked at the woman and noticed that she had enough presence of mind to cover herself with the shreds of sheets on that bed. Her smile was as pretty as her sweet voice. Both of them thanked me profusely but I retorted by saying, let us thank our Lord God for what He has accomplished this night. I never did go back into that room to recover my oil bottle. My dear friends of the Inner Circle this afternoon, I wish to inform you that in case you have any doubt that demons are indeed very real, one must be filled with the spirit of the Most High God in order to assist you in detecting their presence. It is therefore very imperative for you to depend upon the power of Almighty God, the ring of fire prayer, and the infilling of the spirit of truth if you want to avoid being attacked by demons or evil spirits. At this time, I wish all of you to stand and allow me to pray a special prayer for you and for members of your family that you will be totally covered with his divine protection at all times. Chaplain Harley, come and stand with me, please. Reverend Carroll, come and stand with me, please. You are not at this inner circle meeting by accident. Do you believe that? Yeah. You are here to feel and to sense and to witness a power not of this world. Raise your right hand with me, please. My loving Father, creator of the universe, you have dominion over every evil power, demon, gray, or any other unclean spiritual individual who may come against my members of the inner circle. I pray your divine protection around them 
as well as the members of their family, their wives, their husbands, their children, even their animals. I pray that you'll cover them now and forever with your divine protection and let the fire of God become manifest in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. And this is information.